companion. Yes, 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 yes. What's up, sir? Not a lot. Dude. Just living. Song Finch uh, OG, literally day one, right? Day one. I was trying to peg it because it's like, I know we did this like roll this rollout. They actually flew me here at the very beginning of the whole thing. Like first YouTube video is, nice. the, is the one that we did. Tell me about your sound. I know Song Finch is like singer songwriter, kind of acoustic pop, but out in the world for your original stuff, it's a little, uh, I don't want to dare I say edgier. Like how would you describe yeah. your, your sound? I think you could, I mean, we were, we were talking about this just a little bit ago. It's, I would say it's like alt pop, but it has more like beat based yeah. hip hop influence in a lot of the production elements and whatnot. Yeah. We kind of, kind of like to explore a little bit just alt pop i like that that's a really good way to put it yeah that's what i was saying off off screen i was like dude it's kind of, it's pop but it's not but it's kind of r&b but it's definitely not r&b right and it's hip-hop but it isn't but it is right and and also like i know i i think anybody who's in the in the pop realm would say this but like we're not trying to do the cookie cutter follow what's happening right now i don't think anybody's ever trying to do that but right. that's that's part of the fun is just trying to be innovative and and blending genres like we got a song coming out at the end of the month that's like for sure a drum and bass nice track so it's like really really fast drums that deep bass and it's like i've never done anything like that before and Dude. i don't know if that's pop but the the sonics in it are like well it's music you know? right it is you know yeah, what i mean yeah. like who cares write your songs make your music yeah. and, and i know in song finch obviously we have to categorize right for so sure our customers can be like oh i would like a pop song yes uh but yeah. in the world like you know you don't have to categorize right you know what i mean yeah i've never really designed i mean whenever i get asked like what do you guys sound like or what what's your whatever i fumble all over that question yeah i don't know so so i was happy that you were alt pop able to <laughs> dude i don't want you know i'm not yeah. taking over your management but alt pop might be the yeah. uh, the tagline for you emotional moody east coast alt pop yeah exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> uh east coast you're you're a carolina boy but uh a birdie told me that are you are you like a south dakota first yeah what's your what's your origin story yeah sir? uh south dakota for 28 years of my life yep. born and raised in sioux falls brandon which is like a suburb of sioux falls um and then i met my wife and she got uh into grad school at wake forest university and i was like i, I think it's time for a change yeah so i i jumped ship right after we got married and been out there since 2017. what's the music scene like in south dakota for real like serious question is there a music scene out there yeah uh it's it the underground hip hop scene is is real strong, and there's a there's a pretty good hardcore scene. That's dope. In in the city. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people sleep on like some towns that you wouldn't like, you know, states whatever that you wouldn't think of as music first. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. my buddies in Nebraska right now because they're putting on like a huge show and like I know Nebraska's me. I'm, this is not shots fired <laughs> anywhere. Yeah. But when you think music, you think maybe whatever Nashville, New York, right, right. L.A. It's like don't sleep on South Dakota, huh? Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, you can and it's fine. You know, you got you got Minneapolis and then you got Omaha. Uh -huh, and usually the routing is gonna like just pass right right over Sioux Falls, but Sioux Falls they've got a, they've got some good bigger size venues for for artists that are doing like club stuff like House of Blues and whatnot. They've yeah, got a good yeah. place called the District there that's good, and then they got the Denny Sanford Center where they're having like you know Simon and Garfunkel and all these other. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Pivot, Simon and Garfunkel yeah. have my heart. Like I'm, I'm hip hop guy, but I'm all over the board. What are you listening to as a fan when you're not making music? Oh man, that is, that's actually another hard question for me. I listen to like, sometimes I'll listen to Tyler, the creator. Sometimes I'll listen to the 1975. Yeah. It just depends. A lot of times I'm, I'm listening to like the discover weekly playlist or like fresh finds. Yeah. Uh, just to, just to, because they don't a lot of those are not genre bound so i think it's really eclectic it just depends dude and, and those algorithms are getting so good at like giving you what you like it's like oh for me I'm it's saying. like yeah like i said it's like here's a nas and then here's yeah. a beatles and then here's yep. a jim croce and then here's a freaking in sync or whatever you yeah, know what i mean yeah. like they're getting creative yeah. with it <laughs> that's that's what mine looks like it's just it, it's kind of all over the map yeah yes yeah. that's, that's kind of how i i i think that bleeds through into the music that I'm making. It's kind of whatever I'm listening to at the time or like something will inspire me. Plus the producer that I work with up in New York, his name's Zach Golden. I have to give him a shout out because he's been, he's been real pivotal in helping me get to the, that sort of pop 
yeah finished sound well your sound is very polished in a good way i mean that obviously as a compliment you know what i mean like it it sounds polished without while still being like a little bit edgy if you will you know what i mean um but you're a producer though too right i know you're shouting out your boy but you produce as well yeah yeah i would say that he and i are co-producers you know we we take turns doing the heavy lifting like you know one of the the first song that we released that he and i have worked on together is called fun after sunsets and that one when i sent or well he came down to north carolina and we worked on songs for like three days and uh i won't forget this because i i gave him the demo that i had made to that point which was i think it was 49 seconds long yeah and it had like most of the hip-hop production elements in it already it had almost all the vocals in it it was like a, a verse a chorus and then a half of a second verse and then he was sitting in the back you know on his computer with headphones on doing whatever and i was recording vocals for a different song that yeah. we, i was cutting the vocals for the next one we were doing and when i finished doing that he's like hey I, I just wanted to like you know very subtly like hey yeah I, i've just finished working on this one whatever it was like two and a half minutes long out of 49 seconds and he made it like a fully polished pop track that just like See. i mean so i i i would say we we work really well together co-producing stuff because yeah. it's yeah it's never all one person it's just kind of dude and having those people on your team that can take your idea and then like expand upon it upon it and yeah. like make it better and longer yeah. and like oh what if we did this or whatever and you're like oh yeah Bro, please I, let's do it i am continually floored by his ability to like extract what and it's not always i i, I want to be careful to say it's not always in my head but sure. it's like the potential like we were just working on a new one that's like still very much in the demo phase but like i had this idea this melody in my head and then i I, you know i cut the vocals to our initial production to it and it was fine we both knew that this was a demo but then like three days later he texted me and he was like bro i think i just went crazy on this one i'm gonna send it to you whatever if you hate it we'll flush it down the toilet and i listened to it and i was just like yeah, that's the best, dude. You gotta be kidding me. That's the best. Yeah. That's the so, best. Do yeah. you play any other instruments too? Yeah, I I do. I am. I would say I am average slash sub average at, at very a lot of different instruments. Yeah. So like guitar, I'm fine at. I'm adequate at. Piano, adequate. Yeah. Vocals, adequate. Producing. It's like yeah. uh, for me, I'm average at all those things. Proficient. Yeah. Proficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm there not we go. fluent, yeah. you know, yes. in Spanish, but I'm proficient. I you can, won't I can order me... us some food and get us, you know, That's say right. hello and goodbye. That's and see right. What's going on? Yeah, you won't see me shredding on a guitar unless I have sat in a studio for days cultivating a part yeah <laughs> like yeah. i that's just kind of how i am that's but, how i am i yeah. play what i call campfire guitar a couple open chords yep. let's not travel that neck let's not get crazy you know no what no, I mean? no no there are a <laughs> lot of binks and bonks in there if i try and move around too yeah, much yeah. yeah exactly so what do you want to do ultimately i mean i know that sounds like a silly question yeah. like your producer your artist multi-instrumentalist like you know you're 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 killing it but like do you want to be the on-stage artist like five years from now ultimate goal huge right. record deal do you want to be like producer dude that's writing them for this guy like what's your be all end all goal I mean I think that it's really easy for me to just say like I my artistry is the thing I care about the most and so definitely live performance is where it's at for me and being able to communicate the songs and share that experience with people that synergy that you feel on stage and, and that connection that you can make with people who are there to to share it is unlike anything else and it's way better in my opinion than sitting in a studio and like delivering those things through social media and hoping that they pop yeah um so artistry first definitely want to be playing i mean i i still see stadiums when i think about like where I ultimately want to be in unless that changes that's what I'm gonna keep shooting for so that first but I also I love songwriting I love getting in in rooms with people and helping like extract ideas and and things like that and and add to them if I can so I'm yeah down so well-rounded but ultimately want to be on that stage for sure because you know some artists you talk to are like oh I'm doing the artistry almost to like hustle my songs like almost like reverse engineering yeah we, we want to do both like I said I wake up every day dreaming that kind of thing and Unless that changes, it's yeah. It's well, you mentioned be- performing. I was on your Instagram and I saw uh, I forget the name of the venue, but you were in this super cool like uh, it was blue lit warehousey looking in a yeah, good yeah. way. The energy yeah. in there looked insane. Want to know where that is? Yeah, Sioux Falls. See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. Don't sleep on it for yeah. real. Yeah, it's a cool spot. I, that's that's like it, that was the first time that I had been back 
to play in my hometown in six years since I moved out to North Carolina. So yeah. that was a that was a oh man, that show was so fun. How often are you playing out? Not as often as I'd like. Yeah. It's it's weird. Um, I was talking to uh, Matthew with Marina City yep. just a little bit ago, and it's and it's weird as a as a pop artist. Um, it doesn't feel like there's as much of like an underground pop scene versus other genres, like not versus, but like you sure. know, there's there's uh, like we, rock, we did like a, yeah, whatever, like the hip hop always... underground scene is so strong in so many places, and I wish that there was that for pop. So playing out is a little bit harder, but um, we've been doing it more this year than we have before, and now that it's just a duo, like my myself and my drummer. Um, it's it's been the most fun that it's ever been. Yeah, well, you can travel a little lighter. Yep. You know, I've been in bands and stuff before, and love bands. It's all good. But when yeah. you're managing five schedules, five personalities, five rehearsals, you know what I mean? That's a little different than like we're a yeah. two-person show. We're just gonna go take over the world. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's that's been really fun for us too because my my drummer Timothy is his name. He. Um, he was the one who came to me with the idea of why don't we just try doing this as a two piece? And I was always so scared of like being uncovered by the audience is like, oh, he's just playing the tracks. Yeah. Nobody, nobody, there's yeah. a guitar part, but nobody's playing the guitar part. Like that's whatever, that's cheating. Yeah. But like we've played six or seven shows as a two piece now. And I, I mean, I can't tell you how many people come up afterwards and they're like, I don't understand how two people can have like that big of a sound. And I'm like, okay, I guess it doesn't really matter. Well, that's what I was going to say to alleviate any of those potential anxieties. Just from my opinion, I think it's more impressive. And like people don't, if you don't, if you're a musician, fine, you want to nitpick it. Oh, there's no backing tracks. Fine. But yeah. if you're just like an audience member and enjoying this music yeah. and your drummer has his pad and he can hit some sample and fire yeah. something off, like the audience is nine times out of 10, in yeah. my opinion, you'd be like, how did that happen? Where'd yeah. that come from? Yeah. You know and he's I mean? like, he, we uh, had the idea of getting an MPC, like yeah. the, the hand, like a finger finger pad thing, and like I think that there's that's like an anomaly too because it's just this little, it's just a little bo lap size box, and yeah. it's producing these things that are like thudding your chest versus yeah. like an actual drum kit is kind of like a, it's oxymoronic in a way. It's like a like wow, there's so much sound coming out of that little box. Yeah, it's, I think it's, like it's a, kind of fascinating. It's juxtaposition, right? Yes. Where it's like, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. that kind of deal. That's yeah, that's so sick. I wouldn't worry about that at all. Obviously, you're not. Yeah, no, I, I'm that that worry's gone after these shows. So I'm just excited to to play more. And, yeah, heck yeah. yeah. Um, talk to me a little bit, taking it back to Song Finch Land. You've written, I think, like 170 songs, almost almost I've, 200 songs, some odd more. Way more than that. Then so I must have looked at the 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 last year or quarter or yeah, something no, accidentally. I I think, um, man, I'm pretty sure I'm approaching like the. I want. I don't want to overshoot too far, but like the 2000, like 1500, 2000. Dude, I must have had a missing zero <laughs> literally on my notepad. Yeah. That's my bad. No, that's okay. So, I, it, it, I mean, I went hard. Like on Valentine's Day this year, I wrote. 200 songs in two weeks yeah those so, rush periods are insane yeah um not to get all into your business we don't have to talk specifics like how has it helped you maybe shape your life i mean obviously it's it. a paid opportunity yeah you know? it's changed it i i tell i mean i'm so open about this like i i mean i've been a musician for 14 years and going on 15 and uh when the pandemic hit and everybody was freaking out about like what am i going to do my, like, we're being told to stay home from our jobs and like having to file for unemployment and things like that song finch was like the inverse of all of that yeah. like that valentine's day and subsequent was like a launch point yeah. and it was it was wild and ever since that that was early 2020 like rob, rob linquist has been my like point guy yeah. since day one and he's always been batting in my corner and for the last several years he's been like all he keeps saying is like my number one goal is to get you out of that coffee shop 100 percent, and he totally did dude my favorite I'm thing out. is when artists tell me i'm not doing my side hustle anymore i've quit my job i'm not doing this anymore i'm a full-time right. musician because you know the music industry it's feast or famine there's the yeah, have and then there's the have nots yeah. and now song which is trying to help cultivate like this middle class of artists we're like you don't need to be a huge name but yeah we'll find you some money you can quit that coffee yeah. shop job if that's what you yeah. want you know what i mean it's changed my life and being able to being able to be at home and work 
for one morning and make what I would make in one week yeah. at a coffee shop, like the amount of time that that opens up for me to be able to work on the thing that I really care about yep. and to provide financially for me to be able to take the time to go to New York or to, or to you know, fly my producer down to like work with me in my studio and to, and to shoot music videos in Colorado yep. or Sioux Falls or wherever. Like I've been all over the place this year alone just doing the artistry that I've always wanted to do, and that's all because of Songfish. Dude, congratulations! That's so. so that's such a goal achieved. I yeah. know. I know there's higher goals and higher bars, but like to even be in the gotta, arena where you're a full time musician, like gotta goal, recognize, goal you gotta achieved. recognize those those points. Like that for me, it's been a game changer. Yeah, that's yeah. so dope, man. Good for you. Um, where can we find you on social media? Let's do some shameless plugs. Yeah, before let's we do get it. Out of here. Um, companion music. Uh, companion with a Y instead of an I, like my name. Yep, yeah. My name is Brian with a Y instead with a y. of an I. Um, looks like company on. It's, it's <laughs> got so it. Just, got it. So I'm also just gonna say that. But um, yeah, it, all of the tag, the social media tags are companion music. Beautiful. Um, and yeah, we've got a got a whole new run of merch. Got a, an album and a half's worth of songs that are coming out over the course of the next year. So heck yeah, plenty plenty to be looking forward to well dude everyone at songfinch loves you uh we can't thank you enough for all of the wonderful you know effort on the songs and emotions yeah. and everything like that and we're just happy to be uh, associated with you Man, so you know thank I, the you the feeling for, is mutual 100%. well 100 appreciate you thanks for rapping with dude, us of course ladies and gentlemen companion